Continuing with my product reviews across fintech, I am looking at Y charts. So I'm going to do a full breakdown, tear down, whatever you want to call it for all the traders and investors out there. As you know by now, I've been doing this for over a decade, specifically working in this industry, building products and tools. Sometimes, you know, they might remind you of Y charts, but the point is now I'm trying to do breakdowns to help average traders and investors pick the right tool for them, understand what's out there, even know how these platforms work. So I think one of the first things to know about Y charts is that it's a data tool for markets. Specifically, they're mostly actually known for their fundamental charts. So their fundamental charts are rather famous and it probably makes sense for me to start there. And what I mean by that is, let's say for example, I wanted to look at Apple. Well, in the securities, I could just type in Apple here and I see its price. But this isn't actually so much what um, Y charts is known for. Actually, what Y charts is known for is you now have this financial metrics button here and a browse button as well. And this is where Y charts is really quite powerful is you now can chart all of these financial metrics over time. Meaning, let's say, for example, you were interested in Apple's free cash flow. So on their on their cash flow statement, how much free cash flow do they have to reinvest in the company, to put toward other projects, for buybacks, for dividends? Well, we're just going to select free cash flow, click submit, and let's uncheck price. So you can see here you have the capability to chart multiple financial metrics at once, but let's click the X to remove price. And what you can see here is we've now created a chart. Just want to make sure you can see this. Yes, you can indeed. I will move my camera up a little bit. We've now created a chart that shows Apple's free cash flow over time. And what's really cool about this is you're getting the data back to 1990. This is a full historical view of Apple's free cash flow, and it works really for any metric. So we can add some more, such as revenue quarterly. So let's look at Apple's revenue quarterly. So now we've got Apple's free cash flow and Apple's quarterly revenue. And what's pretty fascinating about that is you can see how they track each other. What's changing at the business? Is higher revenue leading to more free cash flow? Is revenue growing faster than free cash flow or vice versa? Well, that actually might catch you by surprise here because what we can do now is change our time frame. Let's just zoom in on the last three years. Why don't we do five years to get a more a larger view? And actually, interesting enough, free cash flow was its highest in September 2022, but revenue seems to be a whole lot higher now. You can see it here, but free cash flow is not nearly as high as it was in September 2022. So revenue is higher, but free cash flow is not back to those levels. So now you can start to see that maybe there's something maybe pressing on Apple. Are they doing more discounts? Is labor costs going up? What exactly is causing that free cash flow metric to not rise once again with revenue? As an investor, that's a pretty important insight to have in terms of are they getting squeezed? Is something changing? Of course, this is massive money, by the way. This has $106 billion, so this is a huge sum of money. But I'll take your eyes now back to some of the tools here, which is you also can see this on different data formats. So you can normalize them and get a percentage change. You can do growth and you can do your own custom growth metric. So this is actually a pretty cool feature in the sense that you can type in, I start with $10,000. What is that $10,000 worth today in terms of revenue or free cash flow growth? This might be especially helpful for specific, uh, if you're looking for a return on investment metrics, or even if you just want to see the appreciation of a company, you can say, if I invested 10,000 into a company, let's actually do that right now. So we're going to add price back, uncheck, uncheck. So if you invested $10,000 in Apple in 2019, it'd be worth 36000 today. What's also cool about that is actually you can see that just by buying Apple stock, you've done better than its respective growth in revenue or key free cash flow. Percent off highs is another nice feature. Now I'm going to get rid of price here, but what this is doing is charting the fundamentals compared to its highest levels. How far away is it from its highest levels? This actually does look best with just price. So if Apple's highest level say was, um, let's just say it's $500 a share. So that would be the top here where it says 0%, $500 a share. And then every dip just represents the the, the dip essentially. Like how far did it go away from that all time high? 
Now it's important as well that you have different ways to visualize this. So if you, for example, have um, you know multiple metrics that you're charting, well, you can have a panel per financial metric. So we have free cash flow, revenue, price, panel per security. So if you wanted to add another security to this chart, you could. And really, this is where, in fact, we can do that right now. So we'll add Apple. And now we're comparing. So actually, this is this is always a really nice feature. So, so now we have Apple and Google checked here. Financial metrics, free cash flow. We're just do. Let's do a normalize. Let's do a. Let's do a normalize. Let's do a growth. So ten thousand dollars, just to see what how it changed. And panel per security. So now we're seeing Apple versus Google or Alphabet. Who has the higher free cash flow growth? Well, both started with $10,000 at this point here. And Apple at this point, by the way, it's five years. Apple's free cash flow at $10,000 five years ago is now worth $17,000. Google's free cash flow at $10,000 back then is now worth $26,000. So it's pretty cool. You now know this detail that Apple has increased its free cash flow faster than Apple over that time period. I think the key here of me starting the video like this is this is where Y charts is quite valuable. It is essentially the sort of um, you know it's this is their this is I would say this is their flagship feature is doing fundamental charts. Now there's more to uh, Y charts as well. I'm going to walk you through that. That's the point of my videos. If you choose to get a Y charts plan, at least shout me out or something. But I'm going to go back home and what you see here is dashboards. So. Dashboards are sort of an important tool from the standpoint of you can create a dashboard of things that matter to you and you can come back and visit that dashboard every single day. So if this was your dashboard, for example, all of this is customizable. You can see you can reorder things as needed. So why don't we actually reorder this? Can we do that. Let's see if we can get this back up to the top. Let's see. Did we get it? There we go. Let's even move it up. There we go. So you can see you can, it's actually quite, uh, you can move these charts in any which way you please. But we have widely traded stocks now at the top of our dashboard. So every time we log in, we'll see widely traded stocks. And we can change those by latest, dollar change, percentage change, anything of the sort, data, events, alerts. It's really, now it's, uh, it's, it's really in your hands. You can create this as needed. And once your dashboard is created, just to give you a look for what you can add here, if you scroll down, you've got sectors. So all of the sectors, you've got key economic data. So what's the economic data doing? Treasury yields, energy. If you create custom alerts, you can do that. You get news as well, some asset class performance. And at the bottom, there's an add module button. So you can add things to this as well. You can really build your own dashboard from scratch. So if we want to add a heat map, Let's just do a list. We could add our watch list though. We click next. Let's do equities. Let's see if it does all equities. Maximum 2,000 securities, right? So we tried all equities. So why don't we do sectors and let's do technology and select all. Is that enough? Nope, more than 2,000. Okay, so this, this is where you're gonna wanna make sure you've got a really specific um, concept in mind here. So we added the uh, Russell 1000 heat map and there it is and now every time we log in this will be saved here so widely traded stocks global indices and then here's our heat map and if we like we can click in and now we're on the Apple page so that is the point of dashboards and that is the point of these charts as well that's where I think why the fundamental charts I think this is where why charts is most widely known now the next thing to pay attention to is at the top here you've got these options to click and select into this one is called data this one's called tools then you got support and plans so plans obviously is if you're buying a plan support of course is if you want to go to webinars read case studies get it on their blog all you know things of that nature tutorials tools and data are probably what you're going to be focused on and I think as you can see under the data section right here there's featured content earnings season calendar so you can see all of the earnings coming up today or next week as needed and this is where the data tool I think is helpful it's where you can get to the key data points that you're exploring so let's just click stocks here for markets and now we have this stock market data right in front of us it is an overview of all of the equity data 
out there. If we do indices, well, now we're going to get an overview of all of the indices out there. These are the data points maybe that we want to follow. You can get that right here from this data section. Tools, though, if you recall, is actually where I got to the fundamental chart. So that's probably where you might spend a lot of your time. But there are other tools as well. Dashboards, you can, as I just showed you, if you need to make a custom watch list, you can do so. And actually, you can see that I have some watch lists here from 2016, 2014. I can quite literally just click, let's just say I click energy here. I can see what's in my watch list. I can delete it, cancel it, save it. I'm just going to cancel. I'm not making any changes. And I can use, let me make sure I move my camera here so that you can see this next key component. There's a button at the top that says create new. So I can create in a watch list. So I can add securities to the watch list that I can see at any point in time. And keep in mind, when you have these watch lists created, you can then do a lot with them because you can bring them to your dashboards, to your homepage, to your charting, all sorts of aspects like that. Alerts is, a, is a, always a great feature to have. And the reason why you probably want alerts is, well, if something happens to an equity, you want to get notified by it. But I think what YCharts does really well is while sure, if you wanted to do a 50 day moving average alert, so alert me if Apple hits a certain 50 day moving average, that's cool. You can do fundamental alerts on YCharts, which would mean, I think that this is actually helpful if, if it's like price to sales ratio, alert me when the price to sales ratio goes to one. So now I'm gonna get alerted, alert me when Apple's price to sales ratio goes to one. Another cool thing is I can actually get alerts for news events or financial statements, specific ratings. So in terms of alerts for fundamental investors, this is a great feature that I think is well worth exploring. And once again, that's in the tools section. So you now know how to use the fundamental charts, you know, dashboards, watch lists, alerts. News, of course, is just what it sounds like. You're going to get tons of news articles and you can sort these news by specific symbols. So if we type in Apple, Here's all of your Apple news. We can even do other filters as well, which is pretty helpful if you are looking for, say, indexes or sectors or specific events. I mean, that is a great news filter. You can do a news filter for IPOs over the last two weeks. Click Submit. Here are all of the IPOs over the last two weeks and what people are saying. So not only do you now know relevant IPOs over the last two weeks, but you also know sort of what the trending headlines are. So I would say that as you really follow this video and get the key points, this tools button here is really where a lot of your research is going to start. Now the stock screener, I've done plenty of videos about stock screeners and how to use them. I think the key thing here is that you get to add specific filters to find the stocks that you're interested in. So for this example, I'm going to add market cap. And I'm gonna say I only want a market cap of companies. Let's get in the billions here. I only wanna see companies that are, why don't we just add 20? So this would be 20 billion, because I have the B here. To, and let's do 50 billion. So you can do just this if you wish. This says market cap between 20 billion and 50 billion. Click submit. It's now calculating the data. All of these companies have a market cap from 20 billion to 50 billion, and I can sort them right here. You can imagine though that just as I added that market cap filter, I can keep adding filters on top of them. So now that I have only companies with a market cap of 20 billion to 50 billion, I could add revenue quarterly, and I can also just say companies that do 1 billion in revenue, and maybe, yeah, we want tons of revenue, so let's click submit. So now we just added another filter on top. So we're, we're, this is the whole point of screeners and filters. We're working our way down the list. We've made a market cap here of 20 billion to 50 billion with 1 billion of revenue or more. And now we've got this custom list going. We can add columns. We can save all of this to our watch list. At the end of the day, it's really all up to you. You have these capabilities. I just want to get you started with the tool and give you a full review of what's possible on Y charts. The fund screener is similar to the stock screener, but now you're screening for funds. The So you can see what funds are here, Fidelity, HSBC, uh, mutual funds, ETFs, all sorts of different funds that are available. Comp tables is a way for you to do comparisons across multiple symbols. So let's go ahead and add Microsoft. 
There we go. Why don't we add Apple? Let's add Apple. Now we've got Apple and Microsoft here, and we can create a comparison. And I think the key here is to understand that when you create a comp table, it's what it sounds like comparison. You're comparing two symbols. So I've added these two, I've added metric revenue, I can just see them right here. And now that I have this comp table created, I can just keep adding symbols to get these comparisons right here. It's almost like you're building your own spreadsheet from scratch and then layering information on top of it. Enter the symbol name, enter the metric, view them right there. And if you'd like, you know, you could do PS ratio. So let's do PS ratio. What else, what else are you curious about? How about, can we do FCF, free cash flow? Um, how about debt? Who has debt? Uh, let's see if we can do net debt. Uh, let's see if there's a total debt. That might be easier. Total debt. There we go. Total long-term debt. That's interesting. How about net total long-term debt? And now our comp table is working out as such. We've got the three symbols, Apple, Microsoft, Tesla, their revenue, their price to sales ratio, their free cash flow ratio, free cash flow, and their net total debt. So you can create these comp tables to do quick comparisons of symbols. Maybe you want to add your whole watch list here and just add metrics and compare your watch list. You might spot something with all of them laid out on one page like this, comparing them to one another. There's time series analysis and our internet dropped out for a second there. You can also have this Excel feature, which is a super powerful feature for those who are deep in Excel because you can connect Y charts and Excel as an add-in. Now you're merging these two powerful things together. I don't have access to that right now, but it's something you might want. If you're good at Excel, maybe VBA, if you've done financial modeling before, this is probably something you want. Sectors and investment strategies. Investment strategies is really a cool feature for those who are familiar with long-term investors because, for example, you could look at Peter Lynch-esque stocks. He's a famous investor. All of these stocks sort of fit his you know, investing methodology. You can even read about it right here. And here are some of the Peter Lynch stocks. Go through these, see if they fit You know what you're looking for as well. So I think that now that I've given you some of the key tools of Y charts, I just want to quickly jump into the final few things, which is that you can do a scatter plot similar to the fundamental chart. You can also do technical charts, but I would say that this is not exactly Y charts specialty, although it is possible. It's just maybe a little bit on a slower time horizon than some of you are used to. Let me make sure I just move my... There we go. So you can see here we have this technical chart and we can change the time frame as needed and we can add studies, relative strength index, simple moving average, volume. We can delete these as needed. I'm not a big fan of relative strength index, so delete that. And let's just have one simple moving average, the 50. So you can see that here. And why don't we go to a line chart? So now it's a line chart. And there we are. We're creating our chart as such. We can also add log scale. How about that? So you can do some technical tools as well on Y charts. But like I said, I think the mastery of Y charts are its fundamental charts. That's I, what I found is just, you know, where things get fascinating. Then there's portfolios. And in you can do custom securities, scenarios, a portfolio optimizer. This is where if you're building a portfolio from scratch or you want to sort of test what's possible or see the correlation between your various symbols, you'll want to use this tool. So correlation, let's say you own Apple and Google, but Apple goes up, Google goes down. Now you understand that there's sort of this inverse relationship in your portfolio. It could impact you on a day-to-day -day basis. And that's the portfolio optimizer to run some studies. So I think with that being said, that just about wraps up my demonstration of Y charts. If you sat through the whole thing, you undoubtedly learned something new, and you probably have realized that this product might be for you or not. And for me, at least, I like the screeners, and I think the comparison uh, tables are pretty cool, but the fundamental charts are just my absolute favorite. So that's my review. Let me know if it helped.